how to create your own Power Query rich data types and a little trick about how to edit your code so that any new columns always automatically get added. Okay, let's go. As of the date of recording, rich data types in Power Query is only available in the Insider beta channel. Um, I'll put a link in the article about how you can sign up for that channel if you'd like to try out all these new cool and interesting features. Right, so here we go. I'm just going to get rid of this. We're going to start off. Here's a table. I want to load it into Power Query and combine all three items into a data type. And I'm then going to use that data type in a little drop down box. So what I do first is I turn this into a table and load it into Power Query. They've recently added a new little right click. So right click, get data from table slash range. It highlights it. My table does have headers and I click OK. And it'll turn this into a table and then load it into Power Query. Control Shift Plus to zoom in. There we go. Right, so what I'm going to do, click on any cell, Control A to select everything, and then right click on a column heading and create data type. That's the right click shortcut, or you could go transform and up in the top right here, this will say create data type. Okay, so right click create data type. And what it'll do is ask me which item do I want to use for my, I guess, unique identifier. Well, it's going to be the work orders. It's normally the first column on the left that um, gets picked up automatically here. That's the thing that will be displayed. And I'll just call it work order number. OK. And now this is my work order number data type. Brilliant. Let's call this um, work master. Perfect. Home, close and load, load to. Now, the only place you can load this currently to get this to work is into a table. You can't load it to the data model. So I'm just going to click OK, just drop it here. And now we've got a work order data type. And I can click on this. And I can say, actually, give me the work order name and it'll spill down. Or give me the work order um, team and it'll spill down. Okay. Now, imagine having this sort of blue table in a master location, like a SharePoint site, or even it could be a SharePoint list or something like that. And then you can tap in to it with this Power Query and build your data type off it. What I then want to do is create a little drop down on another sheet that refers to this list. Now, drop down lists can't refer directly to tables. So, what I'm going to do is just simply reference this like this. Okay. So, that just gives me a dynamic array. And all I need to do is now reference this dynamic array with my drop down list, and everything will work beautifully. So, I'm going to go to my drop down. Let me just go here and under home, I'll make it an input cell, data, data validation, change this to a list. And the source, if I jump back to my data sheet and click on here, and then the key thing is this, to put a hash on the end. That's how you reference a dynamic array. Okay, put the hash on the end. So here now is my drop down list. But the cool thing is this, check this out. It too is a rich data type. So now I can go equals this team or equals this um, work order name. And then I can change this and everything feeds off it. That's pretty good. OK, I like that. I can see some real good uses for this. OK. Right, so that's not the end of the story. What happens if in your data source, a new column is added? 
let's say that new column is um, manager. Okay. I'll just fill in some manager names. Right, so we've got some manager names. What happens if I refresh my query here? Right click, refresh. Oh, I get a new column. It doesn't add to the work order. All right, let's go and see what's going on with our Power Query then. So I'm just gonna double click on my Power Query. So what's happened is the created data type step, okay, has said, create this data type called work order number and in it put work orders, work order name and team. Okay, it doesn't say anything about manager. So it's hard coded these references. Now that's not great, okay, because any new column I add doesn't become part of the um, rich data type. And maybe I do want it to. If anybody adds something new, I want it to be part of the rich data type and not have to keep coming back in. And, you know, I could come in here and just type in comma manager, give it a tick, and then it'll just be combined. It'll all be part of this. But that's a bit of a pain to have to do that over and over again. So here's a little trick. What you can do, this is a list, right? These curly brackets, this is a little list of names. Now I can actually get a list of names with a step called table.columnNames. So I'm going to go back to the source. Okay. And then I'm going to add a new function and insert a step. Okay, or a new step really. So it's going to be equals table dot column names. There it is. From which table? Well, the table is the source. So pretty annoying how the brackets sometimes come in there. Get rid of that. Okay, that's it. Enter. See, this has given me a list of the table names. And I'll just rename this step as uh, get column names. And then this is all going to freak out a little bit because this is now referring to this item here. So what I'm going to do is actually say that this change type step is not going to refer to this. It's going to refer to source. Okay, then that should work nicely. This works. I'm just going to replace this whole little list with, you guessed it, get, and there it is at the top, get column names. Give it a tick. It still works. And now any new column that gets added will automatically get added into the data type. So let's give this a go. Close and load. Okay, this will refresh. That's gone. And if we click here, we've got the manager. Manager's in there. And also if I go to my drop down box, and I can say equals this dot. Okay. And ah, interestingly, manager is not there. Okay. Why not? Let's go back here. Manager is here. Okay, equals this dot manager is there. But in terms of my drop down equals this dot manager's not there. I wonder if I have to change this. Equals this dot now manager's there. Okay, interesting. I'm discovering this as I go as well. So I've gone away done a little bit of investigating and there's a couple of things I need to flag, a couple of warnings. So certain things will not update, data validation lists being one of them. So I've got a little drop down list here that's coming from the item above. Let me pick the first one and let me pick uh, the name of that or the manager. So Bob is at the top here, okay? Now, if I do the same thing here and pick the manager, Bob, great. Let me do one other thing. I'm going to take a copy of this and paste it here. And this manager is Bob. Okay. So this is a drop down list. That's just a pasted cell. 
and that's a reference to the actual original list. So if I pop this window out the side and I say right click refresh or I go to refresh all this is now updated okay if I change this to Jane and I refresh this is changed to Jane but check these out Bob and Bob now for me that's risky so if I change this if I change it back now it updates now it's Jane and there's absolutely no way of updating this one so it's the data is stored with that it's like a paste values of the entire set of data um, that worries me that really worries me so hopefully the um, functionality I think maybe it shouldn't even allow you to use drop downs and paste data um, rich data types if it's not going to be consistent everywhere in terms of the refresh because you can just see people updating something you know going refresh all everything updates you think it's updated but then some formula somewhere looks like it should be the latest but it's not anyway let me know what you think if you enjoy these sorts of videos please subscribe and I will catch you next time.